Hey, we have another career interview today. Today we are talking with Kelly. Kelly, why don't you please tell us about your job title, uh, the company that you worked for, and how long you were there. Okay. Um, so my whole career is about spans about 40 years, um, and it is all in manufacturing. I've only worked for two companies in those 40 years. The last company that I just retired with in January is the Toro company. Um, that is based in Bloomington, Minnesota. Um, I held the position when I retired as director of operations, um, and I was actually stationed at the Wyndham, Minnesota plant for the last two, two and a half, three years of my career. Great. Could you tell us about some of the tasks and responsibilities that were involved with your position? Yes. Um, so the, the job of the director of operations, if you will, it's sort of like a principal in a school. Um, I was responsible for all of the activity in the plant. Um, that included um, the operations producing the product, um, included making sure that everybody was safe, um, all the product safety um, rules were met um, because you know, we made, um, in our facility, we made time cutters was a big product in Wyndham. Um, time cutter is a lawnmower. Um, hopefully everybody's familiar with the Toro time cutter. Um, so safety of the employees um, and the plant um, and the product, um, quality, we wanna make sure that what we're delivering to our customers is uh, out of the box they're gonna open it up, turn it on, and feel great about the product and not have any issues. So quality, um, and not only quality of the product, but quality of the components that come in from all like thousands of different suppliers send us uh, products that we put together in that, um, that lawnmower. Um, and then delivery, um, gotta make sure that when the divisions tell us they need a thousand time cutters on Friday, we're making that commitment and when we're following through with that commitment and we're delivering those products on time. Um, and then, um, you know, finally, we could do all of the safety, the quality, the delivery, meet all those goals, but we need to do it at a cost that's effective um, for the company and meeting our budget and business objectives as well. So um, in the plant, we have finance people, human resources people. Um, the Wyndham plant employs uh, roughly 800 employees. Um, it's a fairly big plant. Um, the office staff is about 65, um, and that includes um, quality, um, production uh, operations managers, um, the finance group, uh, the human resources group, um, materials group, um, both the supply chain bringing products in and also scheduling. Um, and um, I know I probably missed somebody. Could, oh, so a big, big thing right now is continuous improvement. Um, we we want to make sure that we're not just doing things the same way every day, that we're trying to find innovative and cost uh, reduction ideas and making, um, making that product um, better and better every, every year, every day. Um, so continuous improvement is another um, avenue that we are responsible for. So all of the people in the plant um, report to the director of operations. So it's kind of like a plant manager, principal of the um, facility um, location. And so as far as for me, my daily activities, it just really depends on what's going on. If we have a safety incident, somebody gets hurt, um, or uh, let's just say a rack falls down with a whole bunch of bins and products all over the floor and people are concerned that they could have got hurt. Um, so that, that would take um, priority over anything else that was going on. Um, and then if we had a customer who had a quality issue, um, I would make sure that the team, the engineering staff is working uh, to resolve those quality problems. Um, and sometimes it involves getting the corporate people involved. Corporate has marketing, they have the design engineering staff, um, the product engineering staff. Um, in the plants, we have operations engineers um, that they don't necessarily design or um, plan for those products. We just execute. Um, so I think, and then just making sure we meet our, our goals, our budgets, um, and our delivery. That's terrific. I, I don't think that um, a lot of people understand the size of a team that it takes just to put out 
one or two uh, products like Toro is putting out. And, and I've toured the facility in Bloomington and know it's, it's a huge ordeal for every project that comes out of there. Very, right. very cool to hear about. Right. Uh, what are some reasons that you find the job to be rewarding either personally or professionally? So for me, um, and I'll go on later about how I kind of arrived at this position in my career, but I really wanted the opportunity to be able to coach people, um, whether that's their own personal career coaching, coaching them to do their job better, coaching them for that next job opportunity, um, coaching um, them for a different opportunity or experience. Um, so what I really love about um, being in this role is having the whole organization and know, getting to know the people, getting to know what their strengths and um, maybe some developmental opportunities are for them, and then kind of shuffling the deck and, and kind of making organizational changes, if you will, um, to expose people to different opportunities that they may not have even thought for themselves that they would be good at. Um, so that's the thing I really love is the coaching and the um, challenging um, people. The other part of it is um, just, I really, you know, I'm a driven person. And so getting our goals, we get annual goals um, every year and meeting those goals is, um, is can be really rewarding. It can be really frustrating, um, but that's, that's the other piece, just, you know, striving and driving a team to meet those goals. And you can't do it alone in your position, you need that whole 800 member team to get your goals. But when you do get those goals, it's really exciting. And um, it's a really, um, it's a huge win for a team to achieve your goals. Great. Uh, would you mind telling us about kind of where you started with your professional life and the path that you um, took up like you were mentioning? Yep. So I um, started um, when I was in high school, I did this thing called the work program. Um, I went to Eden Prairie High School, by the way. Um, so yay, Eden Prairie Eagles. Um, Go Eagles. I, yes, they were still Eagles back in those days. Um, but I I went to work for Rosemont, which was the first company that I worked for, um, just down the road from the high school. And I really um, kind of, I worked in the marketing um, area but then I went to college and I went to get my four year degree at the University of Minnesota, came back every summer and I worked in at Rosemount on the production line, making products and kind of get, getting my first um, kind of into the manufacturing operations. I just loved it. And so I finished my four year degree. I got a, it's a, in family counseling and business. So it's kind of the coaching kind of piece of it I had and then the business piece of it. Um, and then I took a job with Rosemount um, as a um, operations controller. Uh, and so what I was doing then was scheduling materials to arrive into the plant to meet our production schedules. Um, then I worked myself into a planner, production planner um, position, which then was my job to get the production goals met on time. Um, and then worked into a senior planner where I started to become a supervisor to planners and schedulers and controllers, um, it was a small team, about five people, and then also had some production reporting into me as well. So a group of about 25 people. Um, and that, um, we did long range planning, um, kind of scheduling, wasn't really exposed to costs, but new products we did, um, we did a significant amount of work for new products. and. For those of you who don't know, Rosemount um, is, I think now Emerson and Eden Prairie, but the plant that I worked for was the aerospace division, which is now in Burnsville. Um, and that I think might even be called Rockwell Collins. I'm not okay. sure. They've been bought okay. a couple different times. But the exciting part about working at Rosemount was we worked um, on high reliability military operations. So when the Gulf War was going on, we made some uh, guidance systems for the uh, Paveway cruise and the Paveway smart bombs, the cruise missiles. And that was really exciting times to be there and super challenging for scheduling when a war kind of came upon us and the, the demand for products um, really increased. And at, when I was at Rosemont, I started um, to get my MBA. Um, I had like 10 years under my belt with my career. 
And I knew that I wanted to um, achieve um, higher goals in my career, but without um, an MBA, it was going to be challenging for me. So started to get my MBA. And at that time, I was um, kind of I'd been with Rosemont for 15 years and um, wanted to try some another company, just something else, something different. And I went and took a job at Toro. So um, and I the last 25 years of my career I spent with Toro. I started as great. Yeah. Yeah. I I wonder if maybe some kids don't know. So uh, you would you tell us what an MBA stands for? Absolutely. Um, so an MBA is a master's of business associate or business an M- master's in business association or okay. something like that. Um, and basically it, um, it just expands your knowledge of finance and marketing and all the aspects of a business. Um, so it's just, it's just further um, education. And I will say, so most people, they take their MBA and they get it done like within two years or they just really quick. I didn't want to do that. So I went to St. Thomas and it took me seven years to get my MBA because I, I really sunk myself into the one class that I took every semester. Plus I was raising a family. So, um, and having a job. So there were things going on in my life and I, I wanted to savor my, um, post educational experience in getting my master's degree. So, um, so don't think you can through it. Yeah, I, I think it, it's important for um, younger people to understand that a lot of people do choose to go back to school after they've already started or had a career and will continue to take classes or get a degree or go to school as they work or want to progress up like you did. So that's fantastic. So true, Christopher. Um, so my My first job at Toro was a production control supervisor. Um, And then I worked, um, so there I just was really scheduling production, not really responsible for much beyond that, but I had a team um, and we had a group um, and I was at the Shakopee plant at that time. I worked myself into materials manager. Then I was responsible for like getting all the materials in on time, getting production out on time, um, meeting those goals. And then um, I kind of wanted more. And so my boss at the time, I went to him and I said, look, I'm, I'm feeling unchallenged. And is there something else I can try? And, um, and for no additional money, I will say it's not always about the money. Um, so I took on responsibility of a maintenance manager. So the Shakopee plant has hundreds of pieces of equipment and big things like CNC's, welders, robots, blah, blah, um, punch press machines. And so being a maintenance manager in that environment um, was very complex and very challenging, but um, also very rewarding, Um, bringing in a lot of million dollar new um, machine, new product development stuff uh, was was really um, eye opening, I'll say. Um, Then I became an operations manager. Um, Then I went to corporate in Bloomington. Uh, we were starting a continuous improvement uh, journey and lean, they call it sometimes. Um, so I, I took a job at corporate as a uh, corporate continuous improvement manager, working with all of the plants, Toma, Wyndham, uh, Toma is in Wisconsin, Wyndham, Minnesota, um, Beatrice, Nebraska, Shakopee, um, and, and even corporate, um, trying to get some lean um, theory and education into all of uh, the different um, places within Toro. Um, So for those who might not know, uh, lean manufacturing is a way of cutting costs and saving um, money and materials. Is that correct? It is to a point. And the one thing that was really a hard sell for the employees, um, when you when you approach lean as a cost cutting measure, um, they always think about my job, I'm gonna lose my job that you know, the goal of lean really to to put it down into two words it's eliminating waste okay those are the two key words for any lean um, enterprise Um, it's really about eliminating waste whether that's process waste cost waste um, efficiency i mean it's that's really what the two words i would say i would say lean is about um and people get scared they think that cost when you say cost cutting and it's true. It is about cost cutting because obviously all this waste is cost, right? 
Um, right. But um, yeah, people, when you say cost cutting, they always think about their job. So, um, and then from there, I went back to the Shakopee plant as a um, continuous improvement and quality manager. And shortly after, like about a year after that, I was um, promoted to the director of operations. For So I did that in Shakopee for like four or five years. And then I went to Wyndham, which Shakopee plant is a plant of a, a hundred or about 200 employees, 220. So the Wyndham opportunity came along and that's 800 employees plus um, Shakopee is a components manufacturing plant. So the opportunity to work with finished goods, which are products that you can sell to the end customer, um, came along and I, I took it. Um, and then uh, after two and a half years of that, I retired. So, and that is my career journey. And, wow. you know, I will say along the way, um, I volunteered for a couple opportunities um, for, and it's, and like I said, it's not always about the money. It's about getting exposure, getting people to see what you can do, uh, what you're capable of. So I volunteered to be on, um, we, and so SAP is the enterprise system that kind of drives all the functionality in a plant, like the engineering, the bills of materials, the routings of how do you make products. So all that stuff kind of goes into a system. And we um, updated our system to SAP, which is kind of the gold, um, the gold brand for enterprise systems. And I volunteered to be on that team to do that. So I did that in addition to my other job, which was challenging because it was um, going to a lot of different plants. Um, we had a HR manager when I was in Shakopee who resigned and like kind of quickly, and we didn't have anybody in the plant to help the employees with HR issues. And so I volunteered to do that until we could hire somebody um, in addition to my other job. Um, and then the other um, thing is um, volunteering to be on committees like uh, Shakopee is a union facility and volunteering to do what I call union management um, interface uh, work or teams. Um, so just volunteering for some of those experiences. So I did those too. That's an amazing path. I, th I think it's important for everyone to understand that um, if you're a driven person, obviously, like yourself, that uh, you don't typically hold the same position for an entire career. And there's always uh, ways to advance or different positions to move to. That's fantastic. Uh, you've kind of answered some of the other questions we had. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kind of skip around some of the other ones. Uh, were there any classes that you took in high school or college that made uh, huge impacts on your choices or experiences? So I would say um, the work program, and it's not a jail sentence, trust me, it sounds bad, but the work Yeah, will you explain the work program uh, very briefly for us? And I'm not sure if Eden Prairie still has it, but I was at the point in my academic um, career with Eden Prairie that I had enough uh, credits to graduate and I only needed to take like half a year of classes and so I think these days uh, the kids go to um, like uh, Normandale and start their college careers well what I did and that wasn't available back then um, they had a thing called a work program and you could they actually went out into the um, community and found companies that wanted to hire high school students part-time so I started went to school until like 11 o'clock and then I went to lunch and then I went and did my job at Rosemont every day. Um, so that that was kind of my first kind of inkling about ooh, this manufacturing. You don't when you're in high school, you don't think about well, where is this stuff made? You don't think about that until you're actually exposed to it. Um, so that was one. And then the other um, the class that I loved in college was called organizational theory and behavior. That was the best class I think I ever took. And that kind of, you know, put a stamp on me about the whole coaching thing. And so that, those are the two things I think. Great, very interesting. Uh, one last question for you. Uh, do you have any words of wisdom or inspiration to younger people about trying to find a career? Yes, um, so do what you love and the money will follow. Um, you know, and keep in mind that a career that you choose is a 40 year investment in your life. And if you don't like your job, find a job that you do like, um, because it's no, 
it's not worth it to go to a job you hate every day. That is terrific insight. Uh, thank you so much for giving us your time today and, and telling us your story. Uh, this has been really great. I've learned a lot myself. Well, thank you, Christopher. I, this has been a good experience for me. Great. Thank you, Kelly. Thank you.